Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in my life and who you are in my heart. But the Bible doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with just thanksgiving. The Bible is clear. It says we enter his gates with thanksgiving, but then we enter his courts with praise. What is praise? We, we thank God for what he's doing, and then we tell him how good he did what he did. That's praise. That's but it doesn't stop at thanksgiving and praise. It goes on and it says, for the Lord is good and his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. And that's the place where God longs for all of us to be in this place, whether it's in this house or your house. It's to get from thanksgiving into praise so that we can enter into the intimacy of worship where we start stating facts about God and we tell him that the Lord is good and his mercy is for everlast from everlasting to everlasting. And then daddy starts speaking back to us and he says, and I will bless you when you go out and I will bless you when you come in and everything your hands touch I will cause it to prosper I will give you the power to get wealth you will have peace that passes your understanding your adversary won't understand why you can eat at a table that's been prepared before you in front of them I will cause you to lay down in green pastures and find rest you've never known and that sweet communion and you begin to tell him how much you love him and all of a sudden your neighbors don't enter your thoughts anymore the people in your pew beside you they, it's just now you and papa in this intimacy of worship and this sweet communication it's just me and daddy it's just me and daddy i got a house full of people but something special about when my little boy even with a house full of people jumps up on my lap and he holds my face and he tells me how much he loves me it's just me and my boy. I climb up on daddy's lap in a house full of people, and I just tell him how much I love him. And my papa acts like there's no one else in the room, and he looks at me and says, I love you. He looks at me. I've seen the face of love. I've seen the eyes of love. I've heard the heartbeat of my father, and it beats Tony. And when you put your ear to the breast of papa, it'll beat your name too. Oh, this is something about praise something about worship there's something about thanksgiving there's something about praise there's something about worship worship man i tell you i feel the power of holy spirit in this room in second chronicles chapter 20 we're going to go to verse 21 in just a minute but i need to tell you what's going on uh, king jehoshaphat has gotten word that the armies of amon uh, moab and mount seir they're coming to take the kingdom of judah and jehoshaphat gets word that these three armies are coming the first response is fear that's the initial response when you get word that an adversary is attacking now look the adversary hasn't gotten to the kingdom of judah yet they've just gotten word that it they're on their way and the hypotheticals start rolling in to our mindset what happens if and what when and we got we we start getting scatterbrained about the word that the adversary is coming we're not dealing with him at the gate we just know he's on his way fears the initial response it's what Jehoshaphat did he got a little spooked verse 6 through 12 says then King Jehoshaphat called for a national fast throughout the kingdom and national prayer the adversary's coming let's pray in America we do this the adversary's coming let's call somebody let's put it on Facebook the adversary is coming against the kingdom of Judah Judah in Hebrew means praise let me help you the adversary is coming against praise why because there's power in it your adversary's coming the words coming hey I'm telling you straight up your adversary don't need your money he don't need your house he don't need your marriage he doesn't need your business he does what he needs to strip from you first is praise because if he can strip the praise identities connected to that if you don't know who you are you won't know whose you are you won't know what you can do and what you can say and walk in the authority that comes next to identity so so here they come and and King Jehoshaphat initially 
What are we going to do? Let's pray. Let's fast. I'm giving you the T-bone translation, by the way. Verses 13 through 19, the word comes through the prophet. Here's what the prophet says. Stand still and see the glory of the Lord, and do not fear, do not flee, do not fight in this battle, because the battle belongs to Jehovah God. The prophet stood up after prayer and fasting and said, I got a word. God's going to confirm a thing in the earth realm through the mouth and the sound of a prophet. That's what your Bible says. So this prophet stood up. This guy was connected to King David, by the way. He stood up, and he said, this is what the Lord says. Don't fight, don't flee, and don't fear, because this battle belongs to God. This one. Here's the, here's the decree from Jehoshaphat in verse 20. We're not at verse 21 yet, but you need to understand what's going on. So Jehoshaphat gets a, he has an epiphany. He's got the word of the prophet that was released. We're not going to fear. We're not going to flee. We're not going to fight. Daddy said he's got this. The one true God in a land filled with gods. Jehovah said, this battle is his. So this is what King Jehoshaphat said. Hear me, O Judah. You inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophet, and you'll prosper. Then in verse 21 it says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise in the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Men, I want your full undivided attention. There are no women in this praise team. They would not send women to do battle. The men had a song in their mouth. The men had a dance in their feet. The men had an instrument of praise. It'd be all right if the men in America would stand up and say, I will serve the Lord. I will sing my song. I will dance my dance. I will play my instrument. I will praise the Lord. In the midst of a sound that sounds like an attack, I will rise up. It was Joshua that said, y'all go do what you want, but for me and my house, if it seems right to you to go back to that nonsense in Egypt and, and, and go, go, go make your own bricks, go grow your own hay, go do the, the building stuff and all the slavery just because you got three square meals a day and you were content, you all go on and do that if that's, if that's what you want to do. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're rising up right now. I'm going to draw that line right now. And the men begin to take leadership of their homes. And the women loved them for it. Amen. Trust me, fellas, your women, your, your, your woman, not women. We ain't talking to King David here. Don't know how he did it. Not even going to ask him when I get there. I'm just going to like, dude, high five. I don't know how you managed all that. Can I get an amen, Charlie? Say amen. Amen. Charlie's going, <laughs> yeah, amen. I don't even know where I was. Lord, help me. What? Trust me, fellas, when I tell you, if you will rise in the morning and consult with your heavenly Father and get the, get the word of the day for the day, your woman will follow you anywhere, and it will, be a, it, it will be an act of love, not of one of dominance and control, and we're not pushing our finger and pointing our finger. We're not pushing the thumb. We're just simply saying, I've heard from the Lord, and the women goes, finally, I got a man who's heard from the Lord, and, and we're just going to. Trust me, fellas. It gets good when you get in covenant with daddy first. That's just what Jesus said. Husbands, love your wives like I have loved the church. And I gave myself for the church. You, they, your wives need to know, men. And this ain't a men's 
meeting message, but I'm glad you're here. Your wives need to know, just as Jesus gave his life for the church, I'll die for you, baby girl. You're safe here. Amen. I tell people all the time, I will go to jail. God will forgive me. I'll kill you dead and just tell God you died. That ain't very Jesus-like. In the words of Randy Caldwell, your first mistake was thinking I was Jesus. <laughs> Going to take care of my crew. Don't get in the way, man. Amen. Right, man? Can I get a hoo -ah? hoo That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the message, but I'm going to get back to it right here. Verse 22 says, Now when they begin to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against praise. Now wait a minute. They begin to sing. You're supposed to be fearful. You got, you got the Ammonites. Let me, let, me, let me explain something to you real quick. So, Moab was the son of Lot and his oldest daughter. Remember when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? And, 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 and so Lot's oldest daughter, called Mama's Gone, she, she turned around and she's, she's done. And so the, the daughters were like, hey, look, I'm going to tell you a story that's better than days of our lives. Pay attention to this. This is true. This is in your Bible. So, so, so the daughters thought, it's up to us. we got to repopulate this planet. So they get daddy drunk, the oldest daughter does. He sleeps with his oldest daughter, and Moab is the product of Lot and his oldest daughter. And the Moabites came from Moab. Their god was Kamash, or the destroyer. That's who they worshipped. He was uh, a fish god. And it included human sacrifices to the God of Kamash. Somebody say physical warfare. And then the younger daughter came to daddy and said, you know what? My sister did such a great thing. I think I'll do the same thing. So Lot sleeps with his younger daughter. And then Ammon is born. And their God was the God of Malek. He was the God Malek, who is the king of... Um, of, of worship and they offered children as their sacrifices by throwing them into a fiery furnace somebody say generational warfare so we have Kamash and we have Malek we have Moab we have the Ammonites we've got physical warfare general warfare and this is also war, uh, warfare against our seed so not only is it generational warfare but we could probably not stretch too far and say financial warfare you see it but then you got the people of mount seer they were fuzzy headed people they were furry hairy and and, and they they had a guy a god named osiris and the God of Osiris, he was the God of the afterworld. And, and the people who worshiped the God of Osiris, they wanted supreme intellect because they believed if they could get smart enough, they could live forever in the afterworld. Mm. Somebody say intellectual warfare. So here's the revelation. When you see Jerusalem mentioned in Scripture or Israel mentioned in Scripture in the natural, uh, we could talk about the church in the supernatural realm. So when you see Israel or Jerusalem mentioned, and so, so we, know, we know that physical warfare is coming. Uh, if you look at the gods they served and how they worship, physical warfare is coming against praise. We have generational and maybe financial warfare that's coming against praise. And then we have intellectual warfare that has set its sights on praise and they're coming and the first thing the king wants to do is maybe he gets a little bit fearful but then he calls for a, a, a fast and, and and praying and then the prophet rises up and says don't fight don't fear don't flee daddy's got this one he's going to handle your adversary he's going to handle the physical warfare he's going to handle the generational and financial and he's going to handle the intellectual warfare i need somebody to sing me a song you see it 
You see it? I love this. So the, the attack is directed to praise first. Amen. If the adversary can shut down your praise, it's going to be a long day in your world. Amen. Amen. The word believe in verse 20 in the Hebrew means this. It means to be established and to be faithful or to act faithful. Did, don't, let this, don't let this slip by. You can be faithful or you can even act like you are. What is faith? Faith is speaking what God says is so, when it's not so, until it becomes so. That's faith. So I know the adversary is coming. Hey, they're, the generational warfare is coming. The, the, you got kids driving you nuts. Your finances are upside down. Your body's not coming into alignment with the word of God. Your mind is racing here and there. All of these things have come against your house, not to attack you personally, but to strip you of your praise because God knows and the adversary knows that if he can get a praise out of your mouth, and daddy knows if he can get a praise in your mouth it confuses your adversary because your Bible declares that as they sang and as they danced the adversary heard the sound of worship heard the sound of praise and began to attack one another and by daylight the Bible says that all of the adversaries had destroyed one another and the kingdom of Judah got the spoils of the adversary took them three days to collect it all Something about a praiser, something about a worshiper confuses your adversary. You're supposed to be fearful. You're losing everything and you want to praise? Yeah, I'm going to praise him anyway. I'm bringing a sacrifice of praise. If I got to be the only one dance, I'm going to dance. If I got to be the only one shout and clap my hands. It'll wear you out coming to my church sometimes. No wonder I go home take a nap. I'm exhausted, man. But I'd rather be in the, exhausted in the presence of my Father who looks down on me even when I'm dealing with all the junk in the trunk. And I've chosen to open my mouth and praise Him. The adversary has encamped the kingdom of Judah but the worship team is saying a thing. And all of heaven opens up. And daddy goes, here we go. Let's ride, baby. It was the sound of worship that confused the adversary. God confused the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the people of Mount Sinai. The Ammonites thought that the Moabites were the adversary. The people of Mount Seir thought the Ammonites and the Moabites, that they were the, they, they, go get them. And while they're all fighting down in the valley, because you had to come off the high point, if you ever go to Israel with me, you will see all the kingdoms are on top of mountains. It's strategic. So they can see all the way around. So if you're going to go into a battle, you're going to have to take some steps into the valley. But there's a... <laughs> There's a presence in the valley when the praisers are here and the adversary is here. Daddy knows how to take a sound from here and to fill it and to cancel the assignment of the adversary. While you're praising, just get busy praising because daddy's busy taking care of business on your behalf. We spend so much time talking about what's coming and what's happening and I don't feel good and this happened to me and that hurt me and this did that, did that, did that, did that and all the little foxes spoil the vine then we complain because we got nothing to eat off the vine let's get rid of the foxes how do we do that we open our mouth and we praise God we clap our hands and we praise God let your praise fight the battle Amen. And I ain't just talking about the who untied my bow tie. Woo. Got the old Holy Ghost jerk going on. That feels good. I'm I challenge you. Praise him in your house. Hey, biker dudes. Praise him on the motorcycle. Try not to lift both hands when you're doing it, though. That'll be cool. Right? Praise him in the workshop. Praise him at Walmart. 
Well, that's not biblical. Okay, let me show you something. Media team, let's go to Psalm 150. Just six verses. Y'all good? Is this all right? Oh, I'm going to preach. You got to go potty. Now's not the time. Hang on. Psalm 150. Ready? Praise the Lord. Is my mic on? Okay. Praise God in his sanctuary. All right. Let me help explain something to you. How many in this room have said yes to Jesus? Wave your hand. Wave like this. Let me. Okay. So the people on radio can hear you. Now make some noise. You've said yes to Jesus. Woo! We said yes to Jesus. Then, 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 then listen. When you said yes to Jesus, you became the temple of God and the temple of Holy Spirit. So the sanctuary is what houses the temple. So when you got in your car today and closed the door, as soon as the door closed, your car became a sanctuary. When you went to work yesterday and, and, and the door closed behind you, work became a sanctuary. When you went into Walmart and the doors closed behind you, Walmart became a sanctuary. Everywhere you went and the doors closed behind you, it became a sanctuary. That's why this church is not an auditorium. It's not a spectator sport. This church is housing the temples. And when the doors closed behind us, this place, this room, this moment became the sanctuary of God. And so we, we praise the Lord. We praise him in the sanctuary. And then we praise him in his mighty firmament. Well, guess where that is? Outside. So we praise him inside. And we praise him outside. Praise. How loud in the Hebrew. And here's what it means. Robin, you're going to love this. Perichoresis, peri around, choresis, choreography. It's the circle dance. Praise. Now, you go in Walmart doing that, they may ask somebody to call the law. <laughs> but this is about your spirit, man. Watch. Next verse. So we praise him inside, we praise him outside, we praise him for his mighty acts. Has God done anything for anybody? I'll ask it again. Has God done anything for anybody? Yeah. Woo, he sure has. So we praise him in his mighty acts, and then we praise him just because of his excellent greatness. So we praise him when he's done the great and mighty things, and then we just praise him for who he is. We praise him when he's done something, we just praise him for who he is. He ain't done nothing for me, but he's still awesome. We praise him inside. We praise him outside. We praise him when he's done something. We praise him for who he is. Next verse. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. We don't have a trumpet, but we got a flute player. Where'd she go? Come here. Come, come, come. Bring your flute. Yeah. I think she's shocked. All right. Who's got that? Hallelujah. We'll do that. That's the shofar. That's trumpet, by the way, in Hebrew. That's the shofar. Right? And so you got, yeah, just like that. Amen. So just, just play a little something on your flute. Right there in your mic. Is your microphone on? Make sure. Okay, it's on. All right. Carl, make sure her mic's up. So just play something. All right, so we sounded the trumpet. We got the, the shofar. And then we... Praise him with the lute. Just add the F. Good. And God receives it as worship. And then we praise him with the timbrel and the dance. We're, we're, come up here, tambourine man. Robin, come up here. So, just so you know, I am going to show you 
how white people play the Jesus Frisbee. <laughs> Jewish people. White people. Counting on the downs. So we had the flute. Just keep playing. Whatever you're doing there. Then we had the tambourine. And then we come out here, Robin, where they can see you. And then shake it. Just shake it. So we got the flute. We got the dance. And then we had the stringed instruments. Ralph, come up here. Lonnie, where are you? All right, just keep, yeah, just shake it. There you go. So we praise him inside. We praise him outside. We praise him when he's done something great. We praise him for his excellent greatness. We, play, we praise him on the flute. We praise him on the Jesus Frisbee. We praise him on the stringed instruments. Then we got, we've got, we got Lonnie. And, and, and then, hey, do me a favor. Go back to verse 3. So it says on the harp. We don't have a harp. But what we have, when you turn a harp sideways and put it in a box, you've got a piano. And it's not on. I'll let Ralph fix that. So I get to play the harp. I don't know how I did it. Y'all just keep playing. All right? So I'll keep moving on. So we praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Got the shofar. We got the flute. We got the harp. I'll do the harp in a minute. And then we get to, ver we've already done verse 4. Praise him with the Jesus Frisbee. We praise him in the dance. We praise him with the stringed instruments. And we got the flutes. Now look here. Then it says, verse 5, praise him with loud cymbals. RJ, come on, man. Let's do this. So we've got praising him inside, we're praising him outside, we're praising him when he's done something, we're praising him when he's not done anything, he's just great, we praise him on all the instruments, we got the drummer in there, make some noise on the cymbals, then we got that, then we got the harp. We got it all going on right now, right? Watch, 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 watch. And then we, we've got singers. So singers, y'all come up here. So we're praising him inside. We're praising him outside. Do you think that we just put praise and worship teams together so that you can be entertained by Christian music? There's a purpose to it because we've unlocked the thing that if you can get praise out ahead of the warriors, that praise confuses your adversary. So we're going to turn them loose and let them go first. So they come in. We got that. Come out here, Miss Robin. Come out here. Come out here. Let them all see you. Now, dial it down just a little bit, just a little bit. Brother Tony, I don't know how to play an instrument. I don't know how to sing. And I don't know how to dance. This ain't got nothing to do with me until we get to verse 6. Y'all do this. Let everything. That hath breath. Praise the Lord. That's a courtesy clap. I just told you what praise was. Let everything that has breath praise. Some of you all have heard from the adversary, but we will not let him take our praise. The doctor said a thing, but it won't take our praise. The banker said a thing, but it won't take our praise. The attorney said a thing, but it won't take our praise. Now, this is not 
expectation. This is participation. We praise him inside, outside, when he's done something, when he's not done anything. We get all the band together. We get all the singers together. We get all the dancers together. And then we invite you in to the experience. We want you to be a part of the encounter. Because when the adversary destroyed themselves, the spoils went to the entire kingdom. Took them three days to collect the spoils. Somebody say, there's abundance when we praise him. There's abundance in victory. There's abundance in provision. Now shout out loud, I've just got to praise him. You're going to have an opportunity. Stand on your feet all over this room. Now, media team, Brandy, you've been a little conservative today. I just want you to open your mouth and sing. <laughs> sing with us. Ready? Praise team. Let it rip. Go. Here we go. Everybody, sing with us. This is not watching. This is helping and doing. So you're going to sing with us. If you got a show far sounded, that's all right. Hallelujah. Sing. Go. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go. I'll catch up. Okay. Oh, shame is a prison as cool as a grave. Shame is a robber and he's gonna take my name. But love is my redeemer lifting me up from the
Psalm 47. I believe it's 47. Dear God, I hope it is. Verse 1. Clap your hands. But it doesn't say just clap your hands to some. It says clap your hands, all you people. And then shout to God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Verse 2, verse 2. Here's why we claim, yeah. Here's why we do it. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great king over all the earth. Oh, look at verse 1 one more time. Look at verse 1, all you people. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout to God. This is praise. (laughs) If he walked out of that grave, do you get it? I want this to get down in you. So the next time a messenger from the Ammonites come, and the next time a message comes from the Moabites, and the next time the message comes from the people of Mount Seir, that your praise will be seized. You can open your mouth and you can declare, I will not flee. I will not fight. I will not fear. Why? Because God is with me and his mercy is from everlasting. Clap your hands and shout to the God of heaven, Jehovah. Woo! Now give your neighbor a high five and say, I bet you didn't know you was getting into all this. There's something, look, there's an anointing in this room right now for breakthrough. Your adversary needs you afraid. Your adversary needs you anxious. Your adversary needs you worried and bothered. But who can be against you if God is for you? So when we sing it, some of y'all feeling buried right now. You feel like you're in a grave. But listen to the word of the prophet right now. You're not buried. You're planted. Oh, if he walked out, I will too. 
If he walked out of that grave, let me hear you. Let me hear. Oh, he walked. Let's turn the volume up to like 11 out here in the crowd. Come on, come on, come on. If he. He walked. I'm walking too. Come on, Brandon, come on. And he walked out of the grave. I'm walking too. I know y'all can be louder than that. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He walked out of that the grave. grave. I'm walking to, I'm walking to. Put 47 one up again. He walked out of the grave. I'm walking to. When you feel led to do it, to. just do it. Just do it. He walked out of the grave. Hallelujah. I'm walking to. I'm walking to. And he, he walked out of the grave. I'm walking to. I'm walking to. You got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He walked out of the grave. I'm walking to. I'm Thank walking to. There ain't no that's in your mouth. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament. When he's done something good, it's just because of who he is. Whether you can sing, play, dance, or not. If you can suck air, praise the Lord. I want you to take all of this and I want you to bottle it up inside of you and know that this belongs to you. This is not the praise team in parting. This was in you the day you said yes to Jesus and your spirit man longs to worship him. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. 